I tell you, there's millions to be had. These here mountains are solid silk. And I know, you may be contented with their measly surface croppings, but if you're smart, you won't break your backs on the surface. You'll throw in with me, Hank Willis. You break your back where it counts. Dig it. How many times I gotta tell you, strip mining is fool's work. The real profit is down deep. Hear me? Mother low. Way down under. Now I'm offering you, all of you, a big opportunity. You throw in with me, and we'll go out and get us a great big haul. And another big haul. There just ain't no end to it. There's a fortune in silver, and it's gonna be ours. Drink's on me. That's right, drink up. What we need around here is a little spirit. Cal, now you get up there, gal, and you give us a nice, cheery-like little song. Hear me? I got my women trained. Now, what we need is timbers, lots of timbers, understand? Drink up. He'll build a little cabin in the mountain so high for to gaze on his true love as she passes by. Silver Lady. Thank you, ma'am. It's a rejoicing thing to hear you singing so sweetly. You must be a long way from home. Yes, ma'am. Clear from Vermont. Oh, that's way far east. Oh, yes, east. <laughs> I sure am thirsty, ma'am. It's been a long ride on the stage. You just sit a while and talk with me. All right. You can go ahead and charge me for whiskey. To bring me is a big pitcher of the coldest water you've got. Nothing like cold water. Now I have a big mug of steaming black coffee and another big mug of steaming hot milk. Oh, oh wait, wait a minute. I'm thinking about my own thirst so much I, I forgot to ask you what you'll have to drink. Oh, I think I'd like a nice cool drink of water too. If it isn't too much trouble, Joe. saying so, ma'am. This doesn't seem to be a proper place for a fine young lady like yourself. No? No, ma'am. You ought to be sitting at a nice grand piano. 
in a big parlor full of sunshine. The windows wide open and a garden outside. And lots of nice people dropping in, just coming by to hear you sing. It's Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Alone, Hank. He didn't mean any harm. Ah, shut up. Don't talk to her like that. You trying to say something to me, fella? I wish you hadn't done that, mister. I don't like to be mishandled. Ain't he something? Talking to me like he's got nothing in the world to fear. <laughs> I'm a God-loving man. And a God-loving man has got nothing to fear. It won't be safe for you to stay here, ma'am. You better go now. Don't talk to my woman like that. Is she your wife? No, she's not my wife. She's my woman. That's easy enough to undo. You got a thing or two to learn, my friend. Maybe you'd like to take his place. I don't fight with my hands, friend. What's the matter, no guts? What did you say? I said you were yellow. That plain enough? If you're wearing a gun, you've got 10 seconds to draw. Just who are you, mister? Johnny Liam. Uh... I didn't mean nothing, Mr. Liam. Uh, I didn't know who you were. Now you got five seconds. I was just trying to tell you I was sorry. Two seconds. Now, no offense, but uh, fighting with your hand is a losing game. Well, you won't be needing this anymore. Take it to your waistband. You can get a holster later. Thank you. Where are you staying? I... I don't know yet. Come on. in town, such as it is. It's take me a minute to get my gear together, and it's all yours. I travel light. Is it bothering you? One minute he was alive, and then he was dead. I've never seen a man killed before. Everybody dies. Don't you feel anything? He was a human being. His kind don't deserve the name. I feel worse about killing a helpless animal. In the saloon, you said your name was Johnny Liam. They seem to know you. How come you got yourself a room? Right about now, the sheriff's probably trying to round up six men with guts enough to come after me. I shouldn't wonder. That was some shooting. Uh, it starts way back before that. Six years, as a matter of fact. There were three of us Liams. My brother Ben, my brother Jamie, and me. We had a small spread up north. Then the law took it away from us and killed Jamie doing it. That's not right. You should have fought that out in court. 
We ain't bad and dead. This is the only court that holds up in this country. We've been running ever since. They stole from us. They killed Jamie. Now Ben and I do our own taking, our own killing, if need be. When that man in the saloon heard your name, he looked scared sick. I guess that did give me a little edge on him. You didn't have to kill him. You could have let him back down. Sure. He'd go right on pushing people around who were too scared to stand up to him. Well, that's ended, finished. He's not pushing anymore. And you have to start running again. Again? I haven't stopped for six years. I suppose one of these days they'll catch up to Ben and me. When they do, they're gonna pay a high price. Now you better take this, Mr. Liam. Oh, you keep it. You'll never have a better friend. Well, uh, at least let me pay you two dollars for the room. Huh? Got your own rules, huh? Well, I guess everybody does. How much cash money have you got? Oh, about fifty dollars. Why? Well, if you're real careful, it might last you a couple of days. These silver towns cost high. Oh, I I'm going to get some work. That's a good idea. And while you're at it, you learn how to use this and hang on to it. You can get by without a dime in your pocket out in this country. But without this iron, you're nothing. Oh, it can't be as bad as you say. Now, well, maybe where you come from, the law comes in books. But in this country, a man carries it on his hip. Maybe I'll see you sometime. says you need help. That's right. You uh, know somebody looking for work? Yes, sir. Me. Afraid not. No offense to you, fellow. Just that this job requires lots of rough experience. The way things are today, I'd be hiring soldiers to run these things out to the camps if I could. I've buried more than one man along the trails. Give me a chance. You won't have to bury me, I promise you. Look like you got gumption. All right, you're on. It pays four dollar a day and keep. I'm much obliged to you, sir. You won't regret it. Luther, come out here a minute. Hi, hi, Mr. Weaver. There's a new man. What'd you say your name was? Willie Duggan, sir. Put him to work. He can ride out with you when you deliver the payroll to the camps. I'll see you later. Say, glad to know you, Mr. Duggan. We can use some help around here. Hey, have you got a horse? No, I came in on the stage. I came in on a wind wagon. A wind wagon? Yeah. What's that? Well, uh, I used to be a sailor. I always wanted to come out west, you know. But, but but these wagon trains were too slow for me, so I just built myself a wind wagon. That's a wagon with a mast and sail and, and a steering wheel. Yeah, it's a fellow named Thomas, another sailor, was the first to invent one. <laughs> I had a few mishaps and broke down a few times and Got stuck there once in a while without wind, but I made it. I sailed all the way across the plains and passed three wagon trains on the way. <laughs> Were they surprised? Where's the wagon now? Well, I only made it as far as this town here. And then she fell to pieces. It's going to take a bit of money to build a new one, but I'm saving up. Someday I'll build me another one. And then? Then I'm heading for California. I always wanted to go out there. After that, who can tell? Maybe I'll go back to see you again. Sounds very enterprising to me. Can you go over the mountains in that thing? Well, nothing like trying. <laughs> I always figured if there was a wind, my, my little old wind wagon would sail over anything. Say, we got to get moving. You'll need a horse. Why don't you go over and take a look for yourself over there at the barn? I'll get the payroll. Say, Mr. Duggan, 
Did you hear about that killing last night? They say it was Johnny Liam that done it. Man, oh man, that must have been something. It, it reminds me of a time I saw a whale trying to fight off a shark. Oh, oh that big old whale never had a chance. <laughs> well, I'll see you over to barn, Mr. Duggan. I make it. Time to eat, Mr. Duggan. <laughs> Still sore, Mr. Duggan? Oh, yeah. The blister went and broke. Well, it'll soon loosen up. You have regular calluses. <laughs> I hope so. Between the blisters on my feet and the blisters I'm sitting on, I don't know which way to turn. The hills of home are never like this. <laughs> the sea wasn't either. <laughs> At least there was usually a wind or a breeze anyway. Seems the wind don't get out this far often enough. Guess it's too busy back east. But it can sure get hot and quiet out here. Okay for sidewinders and rattlesnakes, I guess. But not much for an ex-sailor. Sidewinders? Hmm. The human kind. I sure hope we don't run into any trouble on this trip. There's a lot of outlaws in this territory who would just love to get their hands on that payroll. Then why did Mr. Weaver send just the two of us? He figured maybe two would get through easier, cause less attention. Besides, he's real short on men right now. There was nobody else to spare. Well, if you ain't gonna eat your sandwich, we might as well get to moving. Just a little window, though. Let me sit for a spell. Uh, say, 
<laughs> You're quite a man for a tenderfoot, Mr. Duggar. <sighs> well, I tell the other boys what you've done. It'll make them sit up and listen. I didn't do any more than you did. Do you know who that big fellow was? Big Jim Set. He and his bunch are the worst cutthroats in this territory. And you got him, Mr. Duggan. Now you can collect the bounty on him. Bounty? Seton had a $250 price on his head. $250? Not bad. But uh, uh, how do they grade men out here? Who, who fixes the prices? It depends on how much in demand their heads are, I reckon. Uh, the more you want it by the law, the higher the price is. It's like buying meat at the market, really. Uh, except in here, it's, it's the worst that gets the best price, if you know what I mean. Yeah, very interesting. Well, uh, we'll deliver the payroll and pick him up on the way back. And, then you can collect the bounty on it. Then I can have something to drink, maybe something to eat. And this kind of activity makes a man hungry and thirsty, you know. On my ship, we used to hand out a ration of grog after we'd done something special. Aye, aye, Captain. We'll get you your ration of grog. Come on, now. Let's move Sutton out of the way for safekeeping. <laughs> Good evening, ma'am. I bought myself a new outfit. So you have. Don't you like me in these clothes, ma'am? They're fine, just fine. Please, call me Carol. It's my pleasure, ma'am. Oh. <laughs> Miss Carol. Just Carol. Oh, I almost forgot. Miss Carol, this is my good friend, Captain Luther. He sailed six of the seven seas. Shall we all sit down? Uh, that's a good idea, ma'am. I could sure use some grog. Grog? Yes, that's a heartwarming drink, ma'am. The finest there is. Would you like to try the captain's drink? Joe? Grog, all around. You've been away. The captain and I, we were out in the country on a job for Mr. Weaver. Yeah, we were ambushed by a whole flock of prairie pirates, Jim Seddon included. Jim Seddon? An ordinary sea rat that deserved to be drowned. Drowned? Well, what the captain means is that we were surprised by these bandits. And it was a bad predicament. Kill or be killed. And Providence favored us. Uh, due to Mr. Duncan here. <laughs> 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 What is this? That's a good luck piece, pure gold. Given to me by my crew at the end of my last command. Sure looks valuable. Oh, they were a mighty fine bunch of men. Give the piano player a drink and ask him to play something sweet. Well, here's to clear sailing. and getting paid for getting rid of them pirates. It seems that we did a favor for the law. I'd like to do more favors for the law. I'd have my wind wagon in no time. Wind wagon? Captain, tell Miss Carol about your wind wagon. Oh. It's a wagon that flies, sails on the wind, goes more than 50 miles an hour over dry land. It's a beautiful thing. Wait, I'll, I'll go find myself some paper and draw you a picture of it. <laughs> hey, uh, bartender, have you got a piece of paper here about that thing? Like I said when we first met Carol, 
You shouldn't be in a place like this. How long has it been? Does it matter? It matters to me. I remember a preacher once said, nobody goes to hell unless they really want to. I ended up here because I wanted to. I don't think so. We live and learn. That's just it. I wanted to live. Instead, I died a long time ago. Carol, where is your home? New Mexico Territory. Little speck of a ranch a million miles from nowhere. It's the old Ridgeway place. Funny. I used to hate it. Now it almost looks good to me. Sometimes I do nothing but think about that wide open country, that good earth, clean as God made it. Family there? Just my father. He asked me to be patient. How do you tell a desperate person to be patient? Desperate? Restless to the point of desperation. I thought life had passed me by. At 17, I was ready to do anything. I did. Hank Willis came by, a miner with big ideas. I was part of the big idea. So I went off with him. I let him drag me from town to town, from man to man, for his own gain. Carol, you don't have to tell me all this. Anyway, Hank is dead. It's past now. Johnny Liam saw to that. It's not past. It's present up here. Leave all of this, Carol. The past will blow away. Put something else up here. Hope. Hope. What's that? Hope? Well, hope is a fever. Makes the eyes bright and the heart light. Makes the blood sing. It's Captain Luther riding his wind wagon into tomorrow. Wish I had a wind wagon. We're all going to have a wind wagon. You just keep thinking that. And now, young lady, you are going to do what I say. You are going to take this and pay your father a long-awaited visit. And you are going to tell him You've come home for a little while, and that soon another visitor will come. One Willie Duggan, an enterprising soul who is currently making a lot of plans for his little girl's future. And it'll be a good future. How about it? Willie, you don't know me. There's only one thing I have to know. Your father's full name and address. His name is Matthew Ridgeway. He likes to be called Matt. The ranch is about 50 miles north of a little town called Apache Wells. <laughs> yeah. There she blows. Oh, she is beautiful. And her name is Hope. I'm going to borrow this from you for safekeeping. Off with you now. Get packed. The stage leaves at 10. Mighty sweet little lady. Captain, how do you feel about women on your ship? Well, now, it's never really been proven, uh, but... She's going away. That's right. Does Carol mean something to you? Yeah. But I... I don't mean nothing to her. Captain Luther, how about capturing some more pirates? Huh? No killing, you understand. 
We just bring them in and collect the bounty. What? Five or six should do it. That ought to be enough to get us a wind wagon and a future in no time. You mean it, Mr. Dunn? You really mean it? I mean it, all right. You and I are going to do a whole bunch of favors for the law. Say, this is a whale of a night for celebrating. More grog, Mr. Duggan? More grog! <laughs> <laughs> so you want to become bounty hunters, huh? Um, just for a, a little while. We'd like very much to uh, accumulate capital as rapidly as possible. Well, it takes a certain kind of a man to become a bounty killer. I don't think you two are cut out for that kind of work. It isn't killing we want to do, Sheriff. Your um, posters say, dead or alive. We mean to bring in your outlaws alive. Did it ever occur to you why there's a bounty on those men? They've broken the law. Uh-huh. Lots of men break the law. No reward was ever offered for them. When a man has a bounty on his head, it means only one thing. It means he's so bad, the law has to bribe respectable citizens to do their duty. Every man on that board is killed at least once. Some of them a half a dozen times. Knowing that, some people, when they meet one of those fellows, turn themselves away. I guess I can't blame them much either. Well, if you're determined to get yourselves killed, it's no business of mine. There they are. Mike Clayman. He's one of the worst. He's been seen lately in New Mexico territory. There's men wanted there from here to Rio Grande. Now, you let me give you a little advice. If you find any one of them, shoot first. Better men than you two have tried to take them alive and died. If I did that, I'd be no better than the men I'm going after. Uh, you bring them in, I'll pay the bounty. And if you want my personal opinion, I think you're both a little soft in the head. Thanks for your help, Sheriff. Good luck. You're gonna need it. Come on, Captain. <laughs> Grog. The same. Two pesos. I'm Marshal Davis, a law in this territory. Afternoon, Marshal. We just came down from Silver Creek. They told us Mike Clayman was around here somewhere. Mike Clayman? What about him? Well, we're wondering if you know where he might be. What do you want with him? We're going to take him back with us. He's wanted for murder and robbery. You two? You're going to try to take Mike Clayman? <laughs> What's so funny? 
or him and his fancy duds. What do you expect to find, Mike Clayman, at a picnic? Uh, I don't think that's funny. All right. But in the first place, he'd eat you both alive. And in the second place, he has three men with him that any one of them would be better than the both of you put together. We know about his men. Do you know where we can find him? Oh, don't worry. He'll find you, bounty hunter. Now, you get this straight, both of you. Clayman's not wanted in this territory, so you'll get no help from me. Is that clear? Nobody asked you for help. Fine. Well, then, why don't you try this place tonight? He usually shows up here about 10. Man, this ought to be something to see. It will be. Come on, Captain. Leave the girl alone. <laughs> That's lousy. I could have done that years ago with a bow and arrow. <laughs> uh, five minutes past ten. Guess maybe they changed their mind, eh, Marshal? Oh, uh, they'll be here. I've seen their kind before. <laughs> hey, Jeb. Jeb, go have a look. I'd be obliged if you'd raise your hands, Mr. Clayman. And what if I don't? Then I'll be forced to shoot you. Uh-uh. Drop that gun on the floor. Kick it over here. Get to your feet. Take his gun and put the manacles on him, Captain. Now what are you gonna do? We're gonna leave here now. Anybody who tries to interfere, you'll be the first victim. Out this way. It's a long ride back. Be seeing you later, Mike. Keep him covered, Captain. How far do you think we've come? Oh, about 40 miles. I reckon we're clear for a spell. I gotta rest. I can't go on like this. My arms are killing me. I tell you what, if you take me in, which you won't, you collect $500 in bounty money, huh? 
Now, I'll give you the $500, make it a lot easier on all of us. How does that sound to you? We couldn't do that, Mr. Clayman. What kind of idiots are you? <laughs> you think you're going to take me out of this here territory? You're crazy, crazy. Besides, Jeb and the boys are probably a couple of miles from here right now. And they better keep a respectable distance. What I said about interference back at the saloon still goes. He might be right, Mr. Duggan. Maybe we'd better keep moving. No sense in tempting Providence. On your feet, Mr. Clayman. Stop there to eat. Can't be more than a couple hours ahead of us. We're heading north. Nothing out there except the old Ridgeway place. All right, let's go. Make sure that nobody's following us. I gotta have some water. Don't give him much. That's all we got. Jeff. Jeff. Jeff! What took you so long? I'm half dead. We had to ride all night to catch up with you. Which one of them's got the key? That one. Hurry up, hurry up! Tie him up to that tree. Now give me his gun. Go on, get out. Go have your knife. Yours. Yours too, Max. Back off. No. Don't. 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 Let's get going.
So long, bounty hunter. Papa. Only God knows. I think he's a goner. He may have a chance if we hurry. Get some water and lots of it. And I'll need some bandages, too. going to be all right, Willie.
don't understand. Carol Luther. All mixed up. Willie. Is this the man you were telling me about? I still can't believe it. Strange, finding your way here. Strange. Like a miracle. I sure had nothing to do with it. Such things as you've told me, Willie. I can't see you with outlaws and all. You always seem so peaceable. I tried to be peaceable. I know better now. They're inhuman. If they're going to pay for what they did to Luther, I'll take them, every last one of them, on their own terms. Changed, Willie. Who wouldn't change? I keep seeing Luther standing there. Hanging there. Dirty swine. Papa's out looking for Luther now. He he'll find him and see that he's buried. He should have been buried at sea. I guess it's all over now. Oh, no. It's just beginning. Waste any time, does he? It's enterprising, just like you said. This isn't the same man. This Willie Duggan is a stranger. What can we do? I don't know. Help him somehow through this if we can. He's sick. I know. I've seen this sickness before. It's an old familiar road. Hurt, revenge, hate. All gets twisted in the mind. First thing you know, the mind gets twisted like a hard, hard nut. If there isn't anybody there to get it out. It just explodes. Ridgeway? I need your help. You aim to please. Will you ride into town for me? Sure. Sell this, and then get me the best double-barreled shotgun you can find. I'll need a belt and some shells, too. Well, am I asking too much? You got plans? I got plans. Nothing will stop you. Nothing will stop me. All right, I'll ride into town the first thing in the morning. But you're going to do something for me. If your mind is still thinking anything on Carol, you blot it out right now. Duggan, you're riding out of here alone. And you ain't never riding back. You understand? I said he'd be home in time for supper. Your father doesn't like me very much. He doesn't know you, Willie. Oh, I think he knows me pretty well. You are feeling better today, aren't you? Just like the old Willie. For how long? 
For now. For now? For now and for later. In between. Yes. What about in between? Carol, I know you don't like this word. You told me once your father asked you to be patient. I'm asking that too. And you must remember that I also told you I didn't listen to him. I'm asking you to listen to me. Oh, Willie, I, I want to listen to you, but I, I can't. All the hope's gone out of me these past few days. Carol, I never kissed you. In fact, I never did learn how to kiss a girl properly. I can't be so bad. <laughs> Papa? Here you are, Willie. You got it. That'll do fine. Just fine. What are you going to do with that? It shouldn't be hard to change over. You're going to make that into that? Exactly. away from it. Some gun you made yourself. Couldn't miss if you were blindfolded. Well, you ready to leave? I'm ready, and I'm much obliged to you, Ridgeway. Don't thank me. I'm just helping you out. Where's Carol? She's around somewhere. You can take that horse over there. I'll pay you back. You'll not pay me back. I can spare a pony. I just want you gone, Duggan. I want you gone right away.
it really him? That's him, all right. Look at the way he plays with that man-killer of his. Well, you can say what you want. He's done more to clean up the territory in six months than any ten men wearing stars. I'm not arguing that. What I'm saying is he's done more killing than most of the men he's gunning down. Maybe so. But still, he's working on the side of the law. And that's he, what counts. Just using the law to satisfy his craving for killing. I'm gonna talk to him. Leave him be, boy. The way he's hitting that bottle, no telling what he might do. You and your blasted horse. See that? He's ready, no matter what. I find him. Clayman? And three more. Not far, maybe half day ride. Where? Wolf Valley, back of Bitter Creek, in shack, old shack. I'll find it. Get my horse ready. Mind if I talk with you, sir? Suit yourself. Well? I hope you won't take offense, sir. But I was just wondering how it felt to... You know what I mean. To kill? Ask yourself. All I do is to pull the trigger. After you people put up the target for me, I'm just doing what most of you haven't got the guts to do. You'll be next, huh? Listen, you. You won't think it's so funny with a double load of buckshot in your guts. Yeah, and if you weren't such a bum shot, all those boys would be alive. And we wouldn't be running for the border. You two can stop arguing long enough. We can eat. These beans are ready. Here you are, Joe. It's about time. If you wanted them cold, why didn't you say so?
Come sun up tomorrow, I'm leaving. Johnny Lim and no Johnny Lim. Suit yourself. No hooks holding you here. You got any more of them beans? You sure are jumpy. I told you to stay outside. I'll heat some up for you. you say? Yeah, and three of his boys. I don't know the names of the others, but you probably got wanted posters to identify them with. They're all part of Clayman's bunch. Why, you... You must be... Willie Duggan. Of course. Why'd you say, of course? Just heard about you, that's all. I got one of Clayman's men back here. He ought to be able to identify what you brought in. You'll know who they are. One you missed. What do you mean by that? Nothing. Nothing at all. Ray, you and one of the boys bring the bodies out here and call the undertaker. But first, I want them identified by Johnny Liam. Something wrong? No. Oh, well, hi, fella. You're a long way from Silver Creek. Hello, Johnny. You know each other? Oh, sure. I did him a favor once. Maybe he's come to pay me back. This here is Willie Duggan. Come with me. I got some bodies I want you to identify.
What's the matter? Why is everybody so quiet? Make some noise! This isn't a graveyard! Put your hands up on those keys and play something! Liam has escaped. Didn't you hear what I said? Johnny Liam broke jail. That's so. How'd he manage to do that, Sheriff? The keys were in the door. Someone let him out while I was over getting his supper. Ah, oh, who'd do a thing like that? You're all acting mighty peculiar. So what's going on around here? Nothing at all, Sheriff. I'm sure none of these good folks would let a prisoner out of jail. Why, that's plumb illegal. Enough of this nonsense. We've got to get a posse together and go after him before he gets too far. Well, which way would we go? North, south, and... Yeah, maybe you ought to have a drink while you're figuring out what to do about this, Sheriff, huh? You mean you... Fight fire with fire, I always say. Sam, I sure hope you don't get your fingers burnt. Oh, forget it, Sheriff, and have a drink.
not forgetting that the Sabbath is a day of rest and prayer, a day of thanksgiving and humble trust. What return shall I make to the Lord for all he hath given me? Give me a bottle. I will call upon We're closed. The Lord as far as I'm concerned, you're open. Do I get a bottle or do well, I take dear it? Brethren, sometimes our burden of coal is so heavy and, so and a glass. Not possible for us to how come they're holding a church meeting in here? It's Sunday. There's some folks go to church. Now why here? The new church ain't ready yet. They cannot be here with us today, but God understands. Won't you join us and sit down, sir? All are welcome in the sight of God. And we shall remember them in our prayers, asking the good Lord to give them strength and deliver them from evil. Some of us are not here for other reasons, reasons we will not judge. A good man once said, love God and do as you please. Perhaps today might be a good time to dwell on the full meaning of these few words. We will now sing hymn 229, the heavenly band of angels in the sky. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Stay where you are, all of you. Uh, please, sir, let us... Let go. me finish. Then you can have your church and the whole rotten town with it. So I'm not good enough to come to me just because I'm a bounty hunter. You miserable bunch of hypocrites! Do you know why I'm a bounty hunter? Because you good people pay me to do it. That's why. You can't do your own dirty work, but you can't wait to spit on the man who does it for you. They just took four men to the graveyard, and you're all so sad about it. But were you sad when they robbed your banks and killed some of you in the streets? Oh, no. It was a different story then. But now you're sorry for them. All full of tears. Well, all right. I'm finished. I've done my last bounty killing. From now on, I don't care if they tear your blasted town apart at the seams. Stay where you are. Let me finish. Sit down. I got the start. Sneak out and get the sheriff. No telling what's going to happen here. The back way. The back way. You got a church full of people waiting, Parson. Give them a sermon. Tell these good people about the Pharisees. Uh, the Pharisees, yes. Well, they were in great disfavor with the Lord because. Go on. Because they were hypocrites. They pretended to be pious and law-abiding on the outside, but inside they were false. But they couldn't deceive the Lord. He could see through their self-righteousness and pride. He called them whited sepulchers. That means they were rotten inside. But the Lord also says, judge not. What's going on here? Well. Behold the sheriff, another self-righteous soul. You're under arrest, Duggan. For what? For disturbing the peace and holding these nice people at gunpoint. Sit down, sheriff. You're interrupting a sermon, a real fine sermon. It'll do you a lot of good. Sheriff, please, we're almost through here. Are you coming peaceful-like, or do I have to do it the hard way? That's up to you, Sheriff. I didn't mean to fire. 
You're going to hang for this, you murdering fool. Please. All right, men, let's get a posse together. Get some things in a bag. You're in trouble. You're in big trouble, aren't you? With the law. The law. It was all a mistake. I'll explain later. But we've got to get away. There's not much time. They're after you, and you come here with that? I'm going to throw it away, I promise you. As soon as we're over the border, as soon as we're safe. But we've got to go, Carol, please. She ain't gone nowhere with you. Doug and I gave you fair warning. I'm going to count to five, and if you're still standing there when I finish, I'm going to shoot you full of holes. Papa! One. Look, Ridgeway, if Carol doesn't come with me, I've got nothing. Two. Go ahead and kill me, then. There's no sense going away without you. Three. Papa, put the gun down, please. No, Carol, this time I mean business. Wanted by the law now, and I have a right. Carol! Step aside. I'll plug him right now. Go, Willie. For the love of God, go. going to be an outlaw bride. You'll thank me for this later on, honey. Nothing like cold water. Oh, Willie. Now there's nothing. 
nothing in our way. In a little while now, clear sailing. Bounty on him, lady. Five hundred dollars, cash money. Oh. <laughs> Harold, will it, dear? It's a funny thing, Diane. I keep seeing Luther's wagon. Big sail. Big wind. It was all a dream. It wasn't meant to be. It sure looks real to me. <laughs> <laughs> 